Now, as I mentioned earlier that I will take a particular case. Since uh, energy is well below the Coulomb barrier, this backscattering can be called as the other pull backscattering. Now, in the backscattering, what you do is, you have a target here, and the beam is coming. This is beam. And in backscattering, you measure, you put the detector here. Let's say this is detector detector at a very backward angle. Now this at backward angle there is a spectrum and if you choose the spectrum in such way that you take the end energies and maximum energy of the scattered particle that means that a scattered particle is coming from the surface itself. It is the particle is not entering inside. So the error due to uncertainty in the thickness of the thickness of the target uh, will be minimized or it will be almost like zero and therefore that is the advantage. So the energy or the k value uh, which we are determining, so basically in, by using whether the aluminium p gamma reaction or any neutron threshold experiment or by this back scattering experiment, we are we are measuring the k value and for k value we should know this precisely and other parameters like as we said that uh, uh, r value r value and uh, because if the beam is coming if suppose magneting like this like this and if beam is if it is following the central trajectory, then, then the radius of curvature is well defined. But if it is coming like this beam is diverging, heavily diverging, then it need not be same. It can. So we have to well define the end. So even if the beam is coming like this, we have to, we have to see that the only a very small portion of the uh, very small portion of the beam is passing through that and uh, that is uh, so that the trajectory is central trajectory for where for which the radius of curvature is well known. So this could error if your beam size is big then that can introduce the error in the, in the case of this. So that uh, uh, can be taken care of by putting the putting the well defined collimators so that a central only the central beam passes through the magnet and uh, well defined and you can put another another uh, uh, slit at the at the you can put another slit at the exit of the magnet so that uh, to define very precisely the central slit. Once you do that, then all this is valid, whatever I said. And uh, once that is there, then central trajectory is uh, known. So R is fixed. So K will be fixed for that magnet. And uh, the error coming out of due to this will be minimized. So here uh, we, uh, we are doing the back scattering. So in this case, for example, as I said that I will give the example of, uh, of the backscattering experiment to determine the K value in case of Fortier. So we use the silicon surface barrier detector and we use several beams of, for example, H1 hydrogen or proton, lithium-7, carbon-12 and fluorine-19. And also that was to and the several targets here they are mentioned and that was to get more data, more data points in order to get more accuracy. And the, the detector was mounted at uh, 160 degree here in the case of and the direct beam of course is going to the Faraday couple that is used for normalization and the measurement of to see that current is not fluctuating too much. 
and that uh, is done here in the case of this. So this is a scattering chamber targets here and the beams here. Now one of the example of this is a proton beam back scattered from the tantalum target, tantalum 181. One to you, this can be shown. Now, as I mentioned that at the, this is a scattered energy. So a scattered energy at 160 degree, highest energy will correspond to the particle which are scattered from the surface, almost from the surface. And therefore target uh, thickness is not coming to. So any uncertainty in the target thickness or any impurity in the target will not be factored into this error in the measurement of K value and therefore the energy of the particle. So you can see that this is the spectrum, one is spectrum and different at different energies. So you let us take this one spectrum at, uh, at this energy. C, let's see at uh, 4.974 MeV this one or this is at A, this is at different energy, 4.58 and So you see, this is almost like a delta function. That means this is the very accurately, we know the uh, occur. There is a procedure, analysis procedure to find the exact uh, energy, scattered energy, uh, particle energy of a scattered particle at 160 degree. And that of course, the theoretically, you can calculate the energy by uh, this you can measure and uh, this you can calculate. So using this expression, you can calculate the, and uh, that is uh, matching with the uh, detector, the energy obtained from the detector. So this was the arrangement and the back scattered uh, particles were detected and they were analyzed. And we found, uh, now, so, now the error in this kind of measurements can come due to the fact that when this is the magnet, north and south here and this scattering chamber is put in the center of the magnet. And the uh, NMR gossometer normally, you can't put it here, so it is put slightly outside. Now there is always a fringing field here. The field will not be uniform. In principle, the field should be uniform if you want accurate measurements. Then in that case, then the field should be measured here at the center of it. And this should be the uniform field. But since uh, because of uh, limitation, the magnetic field is measured slightly outside. And uh, that is uh, that magnetic field may not be equal to the central magnetic field. So therefore, in order to reduce the error, we have to find a calibration of a magnetic field value at the center and this. So this was done here. The magnetic fields were measured at two places and the ratio of magnetic field V0, which is at the center here, to the magnetic field outside, which is outside where the NMR Gauss meter is put and the actual measurement of the field is done and that we saw that uh, it should be ideally one if it is very close to it but uh, we saw that when the magnetic field is uh, uh, this magnetic field is slightly smaller than at, towards the end and therefore in in calculating the k value or the or the energy effectively we should to take this factor into so we have to and that is because of uh, that is because of uh, uh, because of fringing field fringing magnetic field however this has to be so if you want to decrease this magnetic field fringing then either the pole length has to be much bigger so that in that region of the the iron beam, the field is uh, very uniform and this has to be taken care. However, in our case, uh, this uh, uh, magnetic field was not constant across entire uh, pole 
pole. This is called pole, pole gap, and this was not so. Th but this correction was done. Our the general equation uh, we have derived the simple equations and general equation will be slightly there, which will take care of uh, relativistic effect also. And if you put that uh, again, the uh, this putting the constant into the expression, then you find that the k values again the same, and uh, k is the units are Tesla per mbv half to mu half. Now, if you put all the constant, for example, see when you are doing experiment, you would like to quickly calculate the thing. So, if you put energy in MeV, B in tetra, R uh, the radius of curvature in meters, and uh, C in coulomb, M not in kg per mu, then the, then the uh, k is equal to 4 into 10 to the power minus 7 times this uh, root of it. So this, this takes care of all the constants. So as I mentioned earlier that uh, we did not want to restrict to only one point, one measurement. So we did the uh, measurements for several targets and several beams. Here you have seen, you can see that we used uh, uh, proton lithium 7, carbon 12, and uh, fluorine 19 beams, and various targets. And then we measured the uh, measurement, uh, we measured the, uh, made the scattered protons, and from that we calculated the K value. And here the K value for various targets and uh, projectile combination is shown. You can see that is more or less constant and this is so this was one value obtained but we wanted to make sure that this value is correct and therefore uh, most accurate as i said was is always a always a resonance expression and we should uh, resonant uh, resonant uh, reaction and there uh, you can uh, locate the energy very nicely and this experiment was done over the, the elastic scattering of proton from the carbon 12, which is shown here. And uh, at that uh, B value, which corresponds to certain energy, this was the resonance we saw. And uh, corresponding to this, this was fitted, and then the energy was obtained. And we found that uh, the energy, energy or the K value uh, obtained from these two methods are consistent. They agree very well uh, with the... Now, so far I only talked about uh, the aluminium P gamma, that is one resonance and the other resonance uh, I talked about. In literature you will find that there are several resonances, well-defined resonances have been studied and not only resonances, but uh, also the Newton threshold experiments have been done and some of them are listed. These are, uh, these are the P gamma, uh, gamma resonances, uh, these are the targets and these are the exit uh, nuclei which are, and uh, you can see that the, these are the reactions, they, here we have given the ion energies. And these are the resonance natural widths. I think this is very important. If you want more accuracy, then you should choose a, a choose and a resonance which has very small uh, uh, natural width. Then it will be much easier. Suppose you have a flat resonance, um, I mean very wide resonance. Of course, the if it is flat, it will not be called resonance. But if you Try to do it, fitting becomes uh, 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 difficult and uh, extraction of energy value also becomes very The most widely uh, reactions at low energy accelerators are this 27 uh, aluminium P gamma going to silicon at 992 and that has a 
uh, width or point 1 k. Another reaction which is very widely used for determination of uh, energy via calibration of uh, magnetic field and hence k value is uh, proton the, uh, falling on lithium 7 emitting uh, neutrons that means neutron threshold experiment at 3 at 1.88 mv. Of course, these resonances are available at various energies. So, even the accelerators up to 100 MeV have been calibrated. Have been energies have been have been uh, have been uh, determined using these resonances. And not only these resonances, even non-resonant experiments can be can be uh, used for doing this. But resonances are better and they, they give much better uh, values of energy. So, uh, this is the reference where uh, uh, this uh, data is given and they have done a very nice uh, experiments to measure the uh, energies of the, the both uh, P gamma and uh, P and the actions and uh, this is the I think I have also listed here uh, two, three more re uh, uh, references where you can find uh, the resonances and the P uh, neutron threshold experiments on various targets at slightly higher energies up to about 10 MeV. And these experiments, these uh, experiments also have been done in various accelerators. And uh, uh, a very accurate uh, energy measurements have been done and the values have been found. So at the end, I would like to make uh, remarks that in order to get accurate values of energy, we should avoid resonance mixing. See, for example, if you have uh, two, three resonances that they should not be very close to each other because then otherwise the determination of the energy will become. So you should avoid uh, close by resonances. For example, gamma ray from aluminum 27, P gamma silicon resonances are mixed with those of uh, PP prime gamma. So uh, there may be some resonances using other reactions or the same target projectile combinations. And if they are very close to each other, then they, there will be error into it. So we should try to avoid it. We should only choose the resonances which are well separated from other resonances or other drug. And therefore, uh, uh, in order to do the actual measurement, this should be taken in. Other one is that, uh, you know, this, uh, NMR gauss meter normally is kept outside the central traject, central portion of beam chamber. Uh, because ch beam chamber inside is vacuum, so you, there are ways to put it inside, but uh, normally it is put outside in the magnet. So field will be less than because of, uh, because of fringing field, so field will be less than the central trajectory, which is uh, which is the uh, field required for the uh, calculation of the, and hence we should be properly uh, uh, calibrate the magnet, magnetic field outside to the central, because ultimately it is the central magnetic field corresponding to central trajectory only we have to use. It. So there should be a very nice calibration that should be done. Choose the resonances which have a small natural width because uh, if uh, you have large width then uncertainty increases. So we should have the resonances which are having very small width. Another thing which we have to take care is that impurities in the target should be minimized or at least we should know so that the correction can be made. So target uh, impurity, target composition should be known. Uh, a prior to the experiment and uh, they should be known well. Otherwise the uh, gammas or the other particles coming from uh, from other reaction, from the other uh, 
other elements in the target, they, they will interfere into it and uh, that will be it. We, we have used a, a backscattering method and there is an advantage and it gives better results is because this is independent of errors in the target thickness because uh, at the backward angle we are measuring the uh, backward angle counts, backward angle particles uh, and uh, is not seeing the target thickness. Therefore, the target uh, thickness error in the energy will not be cal uh, contributing and uh, therefore the accuracy will be well. Because we are using from the falling edge of the spectrum, falling as corresponds to the back scattered particle from the surface. Uh, so these uh, uh, these uh, things should be taken into account if you want uh, the, a very uh, good uh, value of the energy. And of course, uh, here in the case of uh, these measurements, what we do is that we want to uh, calibrate it in terms of k value of the magnet, uh, analyzing magnet and uh, the accurate is the k value uh, similar accuracy will be reflecting in the energy so thank you very much